recording started. Okay. Should we just all sit down or do you want to? Uh, yeah, we can all sit down and I'll, I'll introduce it. Um, okay. Let's see. Let me make sure we're live. All is working as it should be. Okay. Yep, we are live. Okay. Oh, look. <laughs> Sorry, you can see yourself. Okay. okay. Hi. Hello. All right, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Hollywood Kitchen. Today, we are going to celebrate the 100th anniversary of actress and dancer Sid Sharice. And I can think of no better company to join me for this than dance expert and dancer Rusty Frank. And also ukulele chanteuse and singer <laughs> Janet Klein. Yeah. So welcome. And the fabulous Carrie. Oh, Bible. and me. Carrie Bible. And me. Hollywood Kitchen. We're Thank you. One kitchen. And I want to briefly introduce Sid Charisse to people who may be watching who may not be familiar. And then I want to dive right into the food for a couple of reasons. First off, we are going to put this in the oven while we're on the air and cook it. And also there's a lot of steps and I'm kind of a little nervous. My first <laughs> casserole to make on camera. So I'm hoping I don't screw this up too much. Fingers crossed. Okay. For those of you who don't know, Sid Charisse was born March 12th, 1922. So this is her centennial year. She was born in Amarillo, Texas, and she became a ballerina at a very early age. She danced with the ballet russe. She was discovered by MGM and her big breakthrough role, which we'll talk about later in depth, was Singing in the Rain, where she plays a dancer who looks just like Louise Brooks and is an incredible dancer. And that led to her starring with Fred Astaire in the film Bandwagon, the film Rigadoon, Silk Stockings. She worked in television for quite some time and lived to be about 86 years old. And she's still regarded by many as one of the great dancers in Hollywood history of films. So we're gonna celebrate her and we're gonna make, right off the top here, her mother's south of the border casserole. And Rusty, our friend, is a vegetarian. So to honor Rusty's request, we are gonna make a vegetarian version of this. So I'm gonna post the recipe and talk a minute about it. It's spicy. It is no. spicy. <laughs> well, Sanctuary's was from Texas. And so this, this recipe is unusual. It's got some spicy Tex-Mex action, but there's a lot of Greek stuff going on. There's, there's a lot going on here. So. I hope I can pull this off. We're going to do it. Okay. And I wonder if that's a clue, if anybody knows about her family background. Maybe yeah. maybe she is a you know, mixture of she is. Greek. So, Greek. Yeah, if anybody she does know about her heritage, I would be fascinated yeah. because I'm sure that plays into some of this. Now, okay, what do you have to do first? Okay, well, we, first we've got the casserole dish here. And Janet, do we need to um, line it with the uh, the phyllo leaves? Okay, let me do that one. And you I learned something while making this because when I saw this recipe, I thought phyllo leaves were green leaves. And so I had this lengthy discussion at Whole Foods with the guy there. And I'm like, no, it's a leaf. And he's like, no, it's Joe. I'm like, but it's a leaf. <laughs> And long story made short, he won. He was right. Show the watch. Yeah, the watch right there. Yes. Yeah. So I, I, I now know what a phyllo leaf is. Yeah. It's well, well, while they're unwrapping, I'll show you the box. It is technically a box of dough. It's very papery. So. Very papery. Oh wow! wow. wow. It's wow. Nice. It's beautiful, right? It's it very looks very like dumb. paper. Oh, very, 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 very dumb. Dumb. Oh. Okay, so, uh, so Karen, tell me, is it, do they say, they say take out two leaves and put both on the bottom? Yes, line the bottom with two phyllo leaves. That's it. I mean, they All honestly right. do, it feels like. Paper. Well, it says butter a shallow nine by 10. Did you butter it already? Butter she butter it. it. Yes. Right. And then okay. what? And then you line the bottom with two phyllo leaves. Oh, okay. okay, and now we're going to do the combination here. Instead of chicken broth, I am using vegetable broth. So that's what we're going to use in lieu of it. Not a problem. Happy to respect the wishes of others. Okay, so it's combined chicken broth. chicken broth, soup. Okay, we've got, okay, so we need, all right, we've combined our, our broth. Normally this would be chicken, we're using vegetable, which I'm told will be a perfectly fine substitute. We have one can of cream of mushroom soup. soup. You can't go wrong with cream of mushroom soup. <laughs> I'm telling you. Well, we're gonna add the cream of mushroom. Okay, now this, and then the sour cream. So we have a half a cup of dairy sour cream. Half a cup. We put this in these nice bowls that Janet has, so it's not in the original Look pack of her okay. okay, now we're gonna put the half cup of sour cream okay. in with the broth and the cream of mushrooms. Okay, so, and then you have the chilies. Where's the chilies? Okay, we got um, some green chilies. 
chilies, right? Here, again, I'll post this recipe, but we've got oh, there um, it is. Can, one can, four one ounces. can of green chilies, drained and chopped. Drained and chopped. Very good. And then the onion and the seasoning. Now, when it said Greek seasoning, again, I'm learning as I go along here. I did not know what Greek seasoning really constituted. So I wound up having to go to a couple of stores before I landed on this. So this apparently all purpose great seasoning. Perfect. And that's something new every day. I have a teaspoon. Okay, so I need just, a teaspoon. I didn't have a teaspoon oh, thing. Okay. So while Janet's finding the teaspoon thing, I'm gonna kind of stir in all of these ingredients. Half Not a teaspoon. I have all of the rusty here. Try not to get I'm wearing a Janet Klein uh, little apron. Is that cute? It's got pockets. That's a shout out for Kate. Yeah. It's got pockets. <laughs> and it's got pockets. I've been trying to get her to write a song for years. It's called, and it's got pockets. Yeah, I know. All of us ladies would like that. Okay, so now we've done that. Um, we've mixed everything up, mixed well. And then we've done that. Now line them. Okay, now spread half of the mixture, half of the mixture. Okay, this goes in. This is the half teaspoon of the Greek seasoning. All right, this goes in. All right, let me stir this in really nicely here and get it all evenly. Which is over right nice. now. Right. What is garlic what is the seasoning? Salt, pepper, oregano, garlic, onion powder, parsley, and five other spices, not again. Ooh, the secret. <laughs> this is very kind of watery to be honest ladies so i don't know how yeah. it's going to turn out keep that okay yeah okay. 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 It's 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 okay. cheese okay. and meat okay so spread now out. this is spread half the mixture half of it over okay. the pile okay. let's get all right let's put this over here i guess i could oh, like a label. Do you have a label oh, yeah it amazes me how paper oh, is look exactly like paper i've never seen I'm kind of fascinated by this. Yeah. Good luck with this. Wish <laughs> <laughs> me well. Are you going to lift it up and just Oh, that would help me, Rusty. Thank okay. you. It's a great idea. Oh, okay. okay, we're going to pour <laughs> half of this mixture into yeah, the so. pan. <laughs> back up. Squire. Oh, yeah, Squire. Yeah. Maybe a little more. Okay. All right. Half of the mixture wow. is now poured in the casserole pan. Right. Watch out for your stuff. Okay. Now, uh, top. Okay. Spread, it, spread half of the mixture over the final leaves. Okay. Now top with half of the cheese. So there's your okay. cheese. There's our two cups. It said low horn cheese. Wait, I have a question. Yes. We haven't added this. When does this and that go? Let's see. Because it said combine chicken broth, soup, sour cream, chilies, onion, and seasoning. Mix well. Butter is shallow. Uh, line the bottom with phyllo. Spread half the mixture. The mixture. Right. Well, here's, here's the original cookbook okay, recipe. Okay. And this is, I printed this out because it's a little larger. Right. That looks exactly like half the mixture. Well, where do you where do you put in where the, the meat? The meat. Hmm. <laughs> when do you put in the meat? That's a great. Oh, question. here it says combined chicken. Okay, that's okay. Right. It's a chicken comma broth. I thought it said chicken broth. Okay, well, uh, all right, now I know. So here we go. Okay. okay. All right. Well, we're, we're learning as we go along here at Hollywood Kitchen. <laughs> all right. Come on. Okay, and then put the now I'm together. using first time. My friend Laura Gabriel is um, a vegetarian and she cooks a lot. And she told me about this faux chicken. Um, I thought it was called Satan. Laura says it's called Satan. I don't know. Either way, it's like a faux chicken type thing. And uh, I'm at Whole Foods, and now I am mixing this into the phyllo leaves. And the uh, I mean, I don't care about puncture. Oh, oh don't time. want to puncture. Oh, sh I'm not sure. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, it's okay. It's okay. Doing so the best we can. Yes, You're out of your kitchen. <laughs> okay. See, that's why punctuation is so important. Chicken. Comma. comma broad. Yeah. Oh my God. That, that really? That's, that got me in trouble here. Got got trouble. The olives. That okay. Wait, wait. Bring those olives back. Let's see here. Okay. Oh, that was supposed to go in too. The olives got missed. Okay. So okay. we need the olives. Somehow the olives got missed as well. Okay. We're going to have the olives in here now. At least we're catching this in time. Yes. So, yeah. you know, that's good. And then we're all gonna right. half the you is that all the olives? Okay. That, that's all the olives. That's all of the olives. Okay, now half of the, the cheese. Okay, one half of the cup. Oh, we've got two cups of cheese. One half of it is gonna go on top of the casserole mixture right now. I'm gonna spread it. Now here's a question. It says repeat layers. Does that mean you do another layer of the phyllo leaves or no? Um it doesn't yeah. say about the layer of the phyllo leaves, but um, okay. So spread, spread half the mixture over phyllo leaves. Top with half cheese. Repeat layers. 
using remaining leaves to form a crust on top. Oh, oh, so we do, we do okay. use so layers on the file. How many layers did they ask us for? Okay, so I'll, they, I'll read the whole thing, everybody, okay? Sorry, we're, we're figuring this out as we go along. Okay. Combine the chicken, broth, soup, sour cream, chilies, olives, onion. Do we have the onions in there too? Uh, the onions yeah, are right, right, right. Yeah. And seasoning, mix well. Butter a shallow nine by 10 inch baking dish, line bottom with two phyllo leaves. Spread half a mixture over phyllo leaves, top with half of cheese. Repeat layers using remaining leaves to form a crust on top. On top. Okay. But do we do one more layer in between? Um, I'm going to assume that's what they want us to do. So we could do one just for fun. All right. Uh, yeah, for funsies. Yeah. It's a casserole. <laughs> I'm not sure. So it's like, it's if like you like think we should on, yeah. come, just get on right now and tell us to stop. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So okay. here we go. Okay. All right. Oh, it looks like fun. Layer number two. Okay. <laughs> Get back, do the splatter. <laughs> Whoa, fantastic. Oh, goodness, this is all, we're all going to be taking home out of this, ladies. Okay, so, okay. well, it's vegetarian. It's there good. Go. So there you go. All right, now we're going to top this once again with cheese. Of course, yeah. 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 The, this uh, um, Satan, however we pronounce it. Satan? Satan? It's kind of, this one for him is kind of clumping together, so I'm just trying to separate it. Do I feel like Julia Child yeah, right now? Yeah, this is right my right. stuff is, is fragile, is it? Oh my, I just touched it. It really is. Crumbling. Okay, oh, okay. Yeah. so now we put the rest of the cheese. Okay, now we put the rest of the cheese on top. And then it said to put a layer of the phyllo on top of, on the, top of the castle. Yeah, okay. Well, this is really going to be interesting. Right? We're going to see what happens here. Just keep dumping away. Keep dumping cheese in it. Yeah. You can't go wrong with that. Can't go wrong, right? It's like a big grilled cheese. And then package. after we do this, we're going to do... <laughs> Um, it actually says repeat the layers using the remaining leaves. How many are left? Well, we That's have two minutes. Okay. But I don't know what it asked for. Uh, how many days? Before it was two. So I, should we do two again? Okay, we're going to top it again. I think this is like a multi-layer complex yeah. kind of thing. And then it says brush. Once you get those on, yes. they brush uh -huh. with melted butter. Yes. Okay. Got that. Oh, nice. Okay, the Very final nice. layer of the phyllo leaves. Yeah. I can't believe these are edible. Okay. okay. And now we brush it with butter. Should I do another layer? Um, one more? Is that, brush it with butter. Work is that one layer? Or, it or is two? one. Let's do one more. Okay. okay. We'll do another layer. Only because it says the layers was two. It's so okay. our, first, our first outing. Our first time to make this, our first time to have a casserole on Holiday Kitchen. So again, we learn as we go along. Okay, and you got the bread or butter. So we put that on it and then we brush the butter and then it's ready to go into the oven. Yeah, brush yeah, with so melted butter. Brush with melted yeah, butter. To do the honor. I'll do the honors. Thank you. All right. Thank you for melting this butter. It feels like brushing a piece of paper. This is the first time I've ever cooked with anything phyllo. Yeah, phyllo is what they use for spano copita. That's true. That's why I would really like to learn if she has great heritage for this reason alone, because it would definitely seem that she does. And I want to also talk, um, as we get this in the oven here, about what it says about her in this cookbook. So it's got some funny analogies to say. By the way, the book this recipe came from is from Great Performances in the Kitchen by Joanna Lynn. And also this recipe is going to be featured in the upcoming cookbook, Murder She Cooked, by my pal Ginny Hamerton in England, who is the original gangster of celebrity cooking and it's awesome. So you're gonna see this recipe in many places. Don't and okay, all right, it's done. It's a little heavy. Uh, we're gonna put this in the <laughs> oven and see what happens. Let's see what happens. Okay. It serves six to eight. There it goes. Right into the oven. That is a heavy, heavy okay. okay. Should we set the timer? Yes. Okay. I'm getting ready. Water. It's a nice, oh, sure. hot LA day. It is a hot LA day. Sure. But this I may be one of the. But it's hotter in Europe. So oh, if anybody's sure. watching in Europe, it's a nice, cool, cool day here. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So um, I love what it says about her in this blog. So I'm just going to read some of it. Um, Texas born Sid Charisse looks as svelte and attractive in her 60s as she did when she danced across the MGM sound stages with Fred Astaire and Gene Kelly. Married to singer Tony Martin, Charisse did, let's see, Charisse does most things she attempts with excellence, but confesses she's no star cook. 
quote, I would love to be able to cook, to have things come out fabulous, but I get in the kitchen and nothing I do comes out right. I understand how that feels. I get this. I get it. Um, she's careful about diet and exercise almost every day. She isn't working. And she talks, they talk in this article about how much she eats a lot of protein that gives her a lot of energy to get out through the day. She never eats heavy foods. She's an active woman and has a lot of energy. She does not eat sweet or rich food. Eats a lot of chicken, steak, vegetables, and salads. And also talks about her food being from Amarillo, Texas childhood. So that would have involved a heavy amount of meat, quail, pheasant, pork. And she says her mother was a great cook. So, and she gives Joanna this recipe and it talks about her handing it over in the book and never aggressive about her career. And she says that's the reason she and Tony Martin were married for such a long time. And it says here too, she was Gene Kelly's first choice to co-star in an American in Paris, but was that's pregnant really and couldn't do that part. Yes. I almost it's always so, that she was in it's, it. always, it's always so interesting when you hear things like that because you're so used to who you saw in it and you're so wedded to their performance. And then you try to envision how different that movie would have been with her. So oh, yeah. because I think that interestingly to me, the movie works so well because uh, Leslie Crowe's sort of innocence. And, right. Yeah. But anyway, I'm sure that Sid could have pulled it off. She was terrific. Well, I would ask everybody, when was the first time that you saw Sid Sharice and sort of discovered her work? I think probably like a lot of people was singing in the rain. Yeah. That scene that she does. Uh, it's the gangsters mall. She's beyond spectacular. I love, yeah. I love the the gangsters the stand gangsters. there and flip coins, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's how they entice her kind of back. No, it's the yeah, jewels. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a big Louise Brooks fan, and to me, that performance was so Louise Brooks. And it's so attention grabbing. She doesn't have a single line of dialogue in that film, but she kind of walks or, if you will, dances away with the movie. Because when you finish it, that's the one of the big things you think about is Sid Charisse. And I love that green sort of satin oh, out. Oh, yeah. Everything about it is perfect. So that, that dance number is called Gotta Dance. The whole, yeah, it's a whole production number. Is it about, is it about 15 minutes? I'm trying to remember how long. It's, it's, a, it's a big chunk. It's, it's a big, like, chunk. Uh, a ballet, a jazz ballet, if you will. It's yeah. got all these sections. Another section in it that she does is with Gene Kelly with the with the wind machines. And I, it's so interesting to read those stories about that, about how those wind machines, they were like airport wind machines, right? And they were, the wind coming off them was so strong because they needed to get her veil to fly all the way up in the air and they were redirected and all this. And she said, you can, you can see some interviews with her online that she talks about how you just had to brace yourself when they pitch that wind machine at you. Can you imagine the noise level? Oh my gosh! And that, that scene, yeah. uh, that scene was called Broadway Melody. Yeah, Broadway Melody. Yeah. And to me, that's why I, I kind of kept picturing her being in American in Paris because American in Paris, I don't know, you can tell me what year that one was, but but it's uh, it's so artistic. It's yes. like very uh, informed by the painters of the day. It's right? really surrealist painters. And um, and so that's why I keep thinking that she was in that one too, because this scene, the Broadway melody scene, it's all just this pink, cloudy stair oh, so setting, cool. and it's forced perspective and yes. that incredible white veil point. Yeah. It's just a, it's just so artistic. If, if you want to give yourself a little treat, and you know on YouTube there's a speed control. Watch that number with Sid Charisse and Gene Kelly. Watch it, slow it down just a tad, just a tad, slow it down so you can really see how everything works so beautifully. I do that once, just, I like to slow down dance to watch the dancers line because with the great dancers, you never see a bad line. You'll never see, if they're going from here to there, you'll never see like this <laughs> getting there. You, everything will be this beautiful sweep. You could freeze it at any point. And it would look great. And so I did that one day, just, just out of a kind of curiosity to slow that just a tiny bit down, like less than 25%. It'll be an eye opener for you. Yes. Amazing. To me, that, that dance, uh, American in Paris, and then her scenes with Fred Astaire and Bandwagon yeah. were just oh, so yeah. painterly and the way that they use the jazz music. And for being in those scenes with both the greats, Gene Kelly and, and Fred Astaire, it was, it seemed almost uh, unique that there was no singing 
in any of those numbers with her. Right. And, you know, maybe she, okay, so she wasn't a singer, but it's, it's, it's weird to see yeah. Fred, Fred and Jean not singing. Right. And it just put all your concentration on, on the set dance. and the dance. And she was such an exquisite. That's, that's a, such a good point. That's because most of, a lot of the numbers in the, the, the golden era of musicals were song and dance and such. It, which brings me to another one of my favorites of hers. Yes. Is Baby You Knock Me Out. Oh, from yes. it's always for right because you always you don't always wait <laughs> oftentimes when you think of Citrice you do think of the ballet the the real jazz ballet from singing in the rain the jazz ballet that she does with Fred Astaire but this one baby you knock me out she's just wearing like what she walked in off the street with a little sweater and a little skirt and she does this really super fun number with the boxers yeah. baby you knock and me they, out and that one all the people around her, the boxer guys are singing. Yeah. And she just says like, KO. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. <laughs> and like in the studios, we're really good at playing to people's strengths. Yes. And so yeah. like, I've always heard that um, Debbie Reynolds was not a ballerina. And so Jean Kelly decided to bring in Sicharice because while Debbie was a great dancer, she was a tap dancer, but yeah. not she couldn't do the ballet type stuff that Sid Charisse could do. So I think they saw, okay, we're going to play to their strengths and put them in what they do extremely well, but um, well, they're opposite. Yeah. Yeah. Polar opposite. Yeah. Yeah. And their physicality is polar opposite. Yeah. Like everything about them. Is, That's is why awesome. I kept putting them in different movies. I know. I do that all the time. I really have to like stop and think. Okay, which is, so yeah, Baby You Knock Me Out is from It's Always Fair Weather. It's 1955. Yeah. yeah. Oh, good. You printed out all the movies. I and know. that's amazing. And I heard too that uh, Citrus was very, very tall. And I had heard a story. Actually, if you go on YouTube, I watched an interview with her that she did for TCM. And she was saying that she was really nervous about Fred Astaire when she first met him because she was so tall. She's like, he's never going to want to dance with me. I'm too tall. And in the story she told, she said that she was in rehearsal with Jean Kelly. Fred Astaire enters the room and they take a break and she kind of just goes off by herself. And Fred comes up and he's kind of looking her up and down. And in the story, she said she kind of goes, yeah. <laughs> like punch down and find a way to make herself shorter or seemingly shorter and then later uh, i think it was arthur Freed who came up to her and said don't worry you got the job yeah <laughs> and so that was and, they, and it was so fun for anybody who's seen the bandwagon they play with that the, the, the height thing in you know scene where they're trying to predator is worried that she's too tall and so they meet in, in the lobby of this apartment and they're kind of going up against each other looking trying to figure out who's taller it's really cute so um, and I think one thing that struck me about the singing in the ring number and her in general is um, I've always loved ballet. I did ballet for six years as a kid and I danced in the Nutcracker and some other ones. And I love ballet and I've always really loved silent film. And if you think about it, they're kind of the same things in a way. It's like mm -hmm. storytelling through purely visual means. And so yeah. like when Sid Charisse is on screen, even though it's the sound era, she kind of evokes a silent star because she can convey such an incredible story without any dialogue. Yeah, I agree with that. That's a really good point. And that what's fascinating about her as a performer, dancer, and private person is that when you see that character that she plays in Singing in the Rain, that really bam. just bam, bam. And, and yes, it's alluring and all of that. And in real life, she was super shy, super shy, because I went to several like Hollywood parties of the old stars. And she would always be standing off against a wall, usually with Cesar Romero, and just standing there very, very quietly. And I, I, I asked them, I said, does she just not want to talk to anybody? Is she stuck up? Like, and they said, no, 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 she's just really shy. Wow. So I even went over and introduced myself and you could really tell that, that she was shy. And when you, when you read about her, that's something that comes up, that she just, that, that dancing persona was not her <laughs> in her personal life. And this, again, that this long marriage with Tony Martin is just so, it's, it's over 60 years, right? Yeah, which, which in is, Hollywood does not happen very often at all. Yeah. So I yeah. love the dance that she does with Fred Astaire, which is sort of the, the, that jazz nightclub. It's just the vampiest, yeah. most angular dance. And, and of you know, the two of them are yeah. just it's stupendous. And the whole room full of these gesticulating characters is just tasty. 
Yeah. I read, let's go a little closer because I think it's harder. Let's see I read a quote somewhere that Tony Martin said that he could always tell which one she had danced with that day at MGM because if she came home covered in bruises, it was Jean Kelly. Kelly. If she did not, it was Fred Astaire. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. Yeah, because she described the difference of them uh, that way that he that that, that Fred. This is beautiful. She said with Gene Kelly, it, he was just this super strong guy, and it was very athletic. And with Fred Astaire. I'm going to touch you. Just That's like, okay. But all he had to do was just a little pressure on the shoulder or the waist. And she, she said, I knew exactly where he wanted me to go. And it was just, she said, you just knew by this little, a little movement of his hand on your hip or wherever. And I love that idea. I mean, the difference between both of them, Fred Astaire and Jean Kelly, we all see it, but to hear it from her perspective was and what did what did it what did Fred that, Astaire uh, say? He said that wonderful. Oh, that she was when something, you dance with what, Jim Trees, you stay danced with. And then it was also something that she was something before. dynamite. Oh, elegant dynamite. Elegant dynamite. Something yeah. like that. Yeah. Dang it. You know, I have, we haven't done a Fred Astaire episode yet, but that's certainly on my list. One of the recipes I found for him was a lemon meringue pie. Oh, I mean, and I was like, <laughs> that is so perfect because you think about it, like. Light is air with a little bit yes. of tang, oh, but also that, very that, cool. That, 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 like some of these recipes seem a little, shall we say, out in left field. Oh, and other ones you read. There's Gene Kelly's Irish stew. Oh, okay. I can't believe he would have eaten that. Maybe, but like some of them you see and you go, yeah, I believe one Cheney would have eaten a potato biscuit. Absolutely. Yeah. Is there <laughs> lemon meringue pie? Absolutely. I'd buy that one as well. I also want to publicly thank Carrie for um, altering the adapting. The menu so that it's vegetarian because when she invited me and she said it's we're going to do this thing and I was thinking oh my gosh you know meat and chicken and and I'm going to have to touch it or do this or that with it and and I have been a vegetarian since I was 16 so it was just so sweet of her to say no 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 we can just adapt it we'll use the the we substitute vegetarian no problem you know, so thank you sure. I've got a super nice a couple I'm friends with uh, Swan, Sherry shout out I have lunch with them almost every Saturday and they are vegans very yeah. strict vegans and they usually bring me lunch to the cemetery after my tour and we sit yeah. together and they I'm, I'm really amazed how well vegan food has adapted oh because the first person I ever knew that was vegan she gave me vegan food I thought she was out of her mind it's like eating a post-it note right <laughs> but the stuff my friends have been bringing me lately I told them one day I said if you told me you ditched the whole vegan thing and went to like wherever I wouldn't have known the difference because no, it has really progressed a lot. There's a lot more options. There's a lot more flavor. It's really, that world is really expanding rapidly. So I yeah. feel like why not experiment, try yeah. new things, we'll adapt. Know. We'll let you know. We'll yeah, we'll let you know. And everybody's body's different. Like some people need to eat a lot of certain things. Other people don't. And I try to be very flexible and open-minded. Yeah. And so if we can do the lemon meringue pie sugar-free, mm. then I'm there. <laughs> that there. I can eat oh. it. Wow, that okay. one. No sugar? I can't eat sugar. Either. Oh, oh, that's going to be a tough one. Right? Let me work on this. <laughs> yeah. Because over the, yeah, the first year of lockdown, in one year, I ate 18 boxes of Seeds candy. I, I, I will never judge for that, ever. It's <laughs> like, just my survival mechanism. Oh, okay, I have, a, I, I have a, a very, very personal century story that I'd oh, like to share with everybody. Yes. Because this it was really meaningful to me. I, I was performing at this huge event, and it was called the Great New York Reunion. And it happened once a year. It no longer happens that I know of. But it was like all of these old-time celebrities, some of them from New York, and they would have it at a high school. And in the high school playground, they would start, and they, there'd be over a thousand people at this event. And they would do the games that they had played on the playground in New York. That's the first thing they did, all these specific games to New York that I had never heard of being raised in California. And then they would come into the auditorium, there would be a big band on stage, and then there would be different celebrities who entertained. And for this one, they wanted to have swing dancers. So I was invited to perform with my dance partner and another couple that we all worked together a lot. And we had a choreography to the song, Jeep Jockey Jump. And in the audience were celebrities, including Sid Charisse and Tony Martin. Oh my okay. God. And they were right up front, man. You could just see them. So I have learned my lesson as a dancer that when you're working with a band that's not a regular band that you work with all the time, you must count them off. You have to count them off. Otherwise, the tempo that they give you might be too fast or too slow. Either one of those is death for a dancer. 
And so this song, Jeep Jockey Jump, has what is called a riff phrase that keeps repeating. And it goes something like this. And then it just keeps repeating this riff phrase. So I count off the band. We come running out, these two, two couples, and we do what's called a swing out. And a swing out, just it can repeat to those phrases. So da 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 and then we do what's called a Lindy circle to close out that musical phrase. So you got the scene set, right? Big band on stage. We come running out from the side and I go, one, two, one, two, three, four. And suddenly I hear, and we're doing these swing outs and I'm looking at my partner each time we're, we're, we're just going, what we Abject terror. I know, and I thought, if the band doesn't get it together, like find the where they are <laughs> by that third swing out, I'm gonna have to stop it in front of all of these people, celebrities and oh audience. And the, the band never got it together. So I turned around and I went like that to the band. <laughs> and I center stage, I said to the audience, let's try that one more time, shall we? And then I turn around again, and now I'm in the center, not off on the side. I go, one, two, oh, one, two, three, four. Okay. So, <laughs> so we did the whole dance, went off, big applause, like everybody was thrilled. And then we went off and then there was an intermission. And at the intermission, a lot of these celebrities had come backstage and were sitting backstage and this was like a, like a little cafeteria room. And there was Sid Sharice and Tony Martin. And I was so nervous because it's, it's, you know, you're just supposed to let the show must go on. You should just do it. But it was impossible. I just couldn't see how we could get through the number. And so I'm walking by Sid Charisse and she turns around and she grabs me like that grip that you get from an older person because they had to be in their 80s or something in the 90s at that point. She grabbed me and she said, you did the right thing. Oh, and I was uh, anointed, yay. Because yeah. she said, they weren't together. There was no way you could do it. But when it's those words, you did the right thing. Yeah. I was so grateful. And now, isn't that great? And she was with Tony Martin right there. <laughs> and so then I did find out, if you're curious, why the band was not together. One of the musicians came up to me later and he said, I have to tell you what happened is that you counted off. You were on the side of the stage where the brass was and the rhythm section with the drummer and the piano and the bass. They were on the other side of the stage and our drummer is deaf. <laughs> he had tremendous hearing loss from playing the drums. So when you counted off, he couldn't hear you. So our side of the stage was playing a beat or two behind what the other side of the stage was wow. playing. And that's why it sounded so cacophonous. Wow. So that when he said that when you stood in the middle of the stage and then counted us off. So lesson learned. Yeah. As a dancer, not only count off the band, but stand right in front of them. <laughs> <laughs> wow. But that, you did the right thing. Yeah. And, so and maybe said, she even said, kid, you did the right thing. Yeah, I put that on my headstone. Yeah. Kid, yeah. you did the right thing. Oh, I great that on something. So I was really great. grateful because it was it was one of those moments where you, as an artist, you have to just make that split second decision. And that the audience was filled with these old time celebrities. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's interesting because you say that she was very shy, but I think probably in her, she could relate to you You're head on as a dancer, tough situation. And I'm sure in, okay. in her milieu of dance, she, she yeah. probably was not shy at all. Yes, yeah, exactly. exactly. So the, uh, and I'll never forget that feeling of. That's one of those moments that like you cherish for yeah, the rest after. of your life. And how it was so gracious of her because I didn't come over to talk to her. She just saw me standing there and grabbed me to tell me that. And I thought those are things that, you know, we should, we all should remember to be gracious like that to somebody down the line. Yeah. Well, and the thing I always think about dancers is because even though I did ballet as a kid, I still love it and I still go to see live dance whenever I can. Is they make it look so simple, but you take that for granted because it's actually so hard the yeah. sweat, the blood, the tears, the pain, the training, the endless rehearsal. But then when they do it, it just is smooth as silk. It looks like the easiest thing in the world. And that is so deceptive because it is not. Do you know the difference no. between an amateur and a professional? An amateur practices until they get it right, a professional practices until they can't do it wrong. That also uh, needs to be hostaged <laughs> on a pillow or something. That is, that is great. Yeah, so I, I hate to say it, folks, but at this point, I'm still an amateur. I mean, <laughs> I, I practice, I, no, I no, practice no. and practice and practice. I, I really practice. 
but I still make mistakes. I, it's rare that I'll get through a whole tap routine perfectly. Well, we're all human though, too. I mean, everybody is like a real pro. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And by the way, I would like to also say, I know that Carrie introduced me on the, as uh, in, in the advertisement for this as a dance historian. And I just want to say that I actually think of myself as a dance preservationist as opposed to a historian. So, because okay. I, I definitely don't consider myself a historian in any way, but I am a preservationist. I love to share and preserve the stories, preserve and share the stories of the legends. Well, that's a wonderful way to keep them alive and mm -hmm. keep their stories out there. So that's, I'll change that. I'll go in and edit oh, thank you. I meant to, but uh, yeah. Sure. So any other Sid Cheese moments that yeah, get your list out, Janet. I really wish I, I've seen some of her films on the big screen. I have not seen them all on the big screen, however. Oh, and silk stockings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, oh, you mentioned silk stockings. Meet like, Me in Las Vegas has an incredible number that she does with Sammy Davis Jr. singing it, mm -hmm. um, Frankie and Johnny. Oh, and God. what a number. I, this is something I want to thank Adam, Adam Wazowski for bringing this to my attention, this number, because I had never seen it, this dance number. And you can just look it up, right? You can pause us if you're watching this after and just write down, meet me in, in Las Vegas. I would say meet me in San Francisco, but meet me in Las Vegas and a Sid Cherise, uh, Frankie and Johnny number. And yeah, just fantastic. Yeah, there was another there was another dance in there where she was dancing to a Tchaikovsky piece. I now that I haven't seen because I haven't seen. And the I said it was uh, choreographed by Hermes Pan. Yeah. Oh, that doesn't surprise me. But she worked constantly with Fred Astaire, right? Hermes. Hermes did a lot of movies as the assistant choreographer with Fred Astaire. Yeah, a lot of them. Quite a few, not all, but a lot. Yeah. And then fifty-seven was uh, Silk Stockings, uh, where she was playing a, the character of Ninochka. So, you know, Make the famous Sprite Bride of Garbo. Yes. Yes. And Melvin Dax. Such a good movie. They're both so good. They're so they're different and good. I'm looking up something if you're wondering. Oh. I'm, I'm not, <laughs> because I'm blanking. Oh, what a surprise. On the dancer's name. Oh, Brasha is the is his last name. Is it John Brasha? The dancer that Sid Cherise dance with dances with uh, in the media in Las Vegas. So I'm just looking it up. Just a moment, please. That's okay. Brasha, but he's the same guy who dances with Vera Ellen in White Christmas. Oh, that's a good one too. Yes. There, to me, there's just nothing like a musical. I love them. And even if you're having a rough time, a bad day, musicals can always lift you up a lot of the time. And I love seeing them on the big screen whenever I have that opportunity because that is such a treat and how they are really best viewed. The best. I mean, it, it seems that she didn't really have a super, uh, pro super prolific uh, career. Well, you know, I was thinking about this, Jenna, and I think part of it was an unfortunate thing of timing because the studio system was kind of starting to go downhill in the 50s, and by the late 50s, it was really in trouble. And I think had Sid Therese been around in the 30s and 40s, I think we would have seen a much longer, more prolific film career. Do you think? Do you? Right. I, but but, I, mean, the, I mean, you can't. Even, this one, even the short list, though, <laughs> okay. were like such a contribution yeah. that it's like, yeah. it's not, you know, it's enough. Yeah. Bad writing is always for whether Meet Me in Salem. Brigadoon. Brigadoon, yes, I mean, Brigadoon. There, and I just watched Brigadoon again the other day. It's such, such a lovely movie. I know that Gene Kelly wanted to shoot it on location, and the studio wouldn't, wouldn't put up the money for it. So um, it, it was something that he was really sad about. But I, I think it's still, still such a beautiful piece. The dancing is fantastic. Yeah, John Braccia. And... He, he was in so many movies. He was in Summer's Hockey. He always gets his feature when they need a kill, killer dancer to dance with the leading lady. They bring in John Braccia. So he was the one that dances with Sid Charisse in Meet Me in Las Vegas. So take a look at that one. You will love it. It's just mind-bogglingly great. Have you seen that number? <laughs> I have not seen see? that. Too. I don't know I why. Need to see that one. I haven't so. seen it again. Thank you, Adam Brzezowski, because I hadn't ever seen that, that one until just a few years ago. I guess it depends on like accessibility. Yeah. Yeah. Nice, nice. And I think, but you're right. I mean, she did, in spite of kind of coming along in the 50s, she really did make a, have a great run of really classic films. Yeah. So that is And, and what we would call A movies, like top budget movies. So yeah, just great with the top 
you know, some of the top dancers in the Hollywood studio system at that time. Yeah. I love how painterly these films look. They always yeah. look like a beautiful painting that just comes to life and then goes back to being a painting when you're watching them. And they're so they're so hypnotic to, to watch. All right, Janet Klein has done something very interesting here. She is kind of you. Oh, <laughs> she did a list of the movies, but then she also wrote the numbers that she was in. I love it. Yeah, that's um, a great one too. Yeah, and it because I figured too that for some people, if you're just nosing around YouTube, um, you know, some of these were not movies that I've gotten to see all the way through, but just these dance highlights. Yeah, that was this is really good. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> I like, oh yeah, boy. <laughs> she got me out. She says, okay, oh, and then boy. <laughs> boy, boy. <laughs> You got me ha hanging on the ropes. Oh, that's right. Yeah. You got me hanging on the ropes. Fantastic. Like oh, it's like such a the oh. sweater and skirt. That skirt, and it's a tight skirt, but it's got a slip. So she can do all these rough boxer guys. And a bunch yeah. of and a bunch of these rough, you know, big nose and some bucks and then the big ears and all right. that. Dense guys. And exactly. then all these great dancers. Yeah, yeah. and then she's like She's like this gorgeous dame, but she apparently knows all the facts about boxing. Yeah, she kind of holds them over with that. She knows <laughs> everything. Yes. Uh, and then it's so sloppy. She does kind of another number that's like that, where it's a real jazzy, fun number that's in just what you would call street clothes rather than a fabulous costume like in the Girl Hunt Ballet. But this one is called the Red Blues. And it's with, when when her character has to go back to Russia and she's oh, back right. in Russia and they're Russia. sharing and it's 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 a it's a such a fun blues jazz yeah number and then you might hear the stocking dance in the bedroom when that's so sweet so have you seen the movie so she's an emissary from uh, from the Soviet Union and she comes to Paris is it Paris that she comes to and she meets Fred Astaire who is trying to lure her away. For various reasons from the whole communist thing and so he lures her with this big fancy room and all this fancy stuff and so for the first time in her life she actually sees silk stockings and so at she, one point in her room she has them hidden in the drawers and she she's by herself in this gorgeous hotel room. she wears these like black oh black and tights you can just imagine that they're, they're she, you know tight. and this song she just does a ballet in the room again no talking and she's just opening drawers and then she'll pull out of those silk stockings and then she just does a whole it's beautiful. Yeah, it's so beautiful. I love that number. And that would be a luxury for women back then too. Should, should we check the other thing? Yes, 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 yes. Check it. It smells really good right now. Fingers crossed. Let's see how the let's see how it's coming out. Wow. What is it? What, what wow. is it looking like? It looks, Ooh, great. It looks great. The thing about the recipe uh, is it was so liquid. I know. There's so, no eggs in it or anything. Yeah. No eggs. So I have a feeling it, uh, the consistency of ours in particular might have been but the cheese might pull it together or something. You know, worst case, we'll have a great soup. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll treat it as such. So, so has yeah, it been a half hour or so? It, uh, it says like two more minutes. Um, and I was just thinking if the, the phyllo dough is getting a little bit crispy yeah, on right. the outside. Yeah. yeah I think we should actually. leave it. Can yeah. you see it? Right brown. So I'm not sure if you can see this. The free whole fine low dough is getting very brown. Yeah. But so, it's still very liquidy wow. in the middle. Well, I'm not sure. I haven't punctured it. So okay, let's put it on the soda. Should we try yeah. to puncture it and see? Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Mm, <laughs> this is gonna be interesting. All right, we're gonna stand up and see how this is working out. <laughs> Okay, it's definitely something you'd want, like a, a casserole. Maybe we can put it on a table, guys, because if I move the camera, it's everybody okay. might get kind of Here, bring this over. Should I bring this over? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. 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 <laughs> now it might have been uh, like for instance the uh, the how much chicken did they say to put in because it may have been well they said two cups cooked diced chicken and we had about you know, 
two cups of the uh, Satan or Satan or Satan or however you say that. Well, all right. So uh, I'll bring. All right, we're gonna. Janet's gonna bring out some bowls, and we're gonna see what happens here, guys. Can I try to cut into it. Does it say anything about letting it sit for any time? I'm gonna see. Cool. Let's sit a few minutes before oh. cutting into serving. So oh, yeah. that sounds the first thing I'm gonna Okay. It's still jiggling though. I'm thinking that maybe a, a bowl yeah. might be better because it's yeah, it a bowl. These are bowls? Oh, they're, it's a shallow, oh, they're shallow bowl. But okay. I, if you feel a, a deeper bowl. A deeper bowl think. might be a better better uh, thing because uh, I'm I'm kind of thinking this might be, yes, a label situation for us. <laughs> Um, if anybody has ever made this casserole before, by the way, or one like it, let me know. Because I'm really very curious if we're missing some sort of binding agent here that is simply not um, not in this original recipe. It could be possible. So, yeah, what's interesting about cooking is so much of it is trial and error. Um, I love nuts very firm, and I got the nuts for the book. I tried to make the nuts biscuits multiple times. They come out this tall, <laughs> and I've tried several times, and they don't work out. Well, then I went to my friend Mary's house and I thought maybe it's my oven. I'll make them at Mary's. Same result. I've tried, I've tweaked the recipe, I've tried everything. So I cannot figure out for the life of me sometimes where I'm going wrong. So that's, that's why start. sometimes it's good to, you know, go to trust in uh, books. Because that is true. We always wonder about some recipes and whether they're given over as a PR, you know, so <laughs> PR person person. And and it, you know, he, he, like, that's how they make soup. Yeah. <laughs> I honestly cannot be mad at Sinchery so because if this does not work out, she admitted herself she wasn't a cook and things went, oh, it's not too bad. Rusty is wrong. <laughs> right, Rusty is totally like, gone fondue. Yeah, I'm just, it's like a fondue. Okay, wow. well, let's go ahead well, and lay right. some up, guys. <laughs> And it's like, you know, again, as I said before, when you have the mushrooms, oh, it, oh, oh my God, oh my God, no, it's a little bit less than, that's hilarious. I don't know. Well, um, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is basically a very thick soup with paper on top. Well, oh, it's been cheesy. And, uh, well, let's see how it tastes though, guys, because yeah. sometimes things can look really sketchy, but actually taste good. Like so, a, list. a bowl. <laughs> All right, guys. Let's see. Okay. Let me show a quick version to the camera so people yeah. can see what we're what we're dealing with here. Interesting. <laughs> Is it Philo or Philo? Because I think I've been pronouncing this wrong. Oh. You say Philo, and I say Philo. <laughs> you say Satan, and I say Satan. <laughs> All right. Okay. Let's see. All the ingredients. We're not to see. We can't go too long. We did everything it said to do. I mean, right? Let me read this again. Five eggs. I'm not kidding. Oh. <laughs> what? <laughs> Ooh, well, it, it's liquidy, but it's really good. Yeah, it's it's it tasty. Mm. It um, well, I was sort of wondering whether that mushroom soup that wasn't Campbell's mushroom soup. No, it was a Whole Foods. Um, Brand, but it but, looked um, like it might be more liquidy than what I remember. Right. Like, you know, yeah, that might be it. That could be part of it. And it was all homeless, like one of those things you just take for granted, I think. Forever. Okay, so here's a note. <laughs> when you make a recipe that's pre, you know, 1960, use a, the available product at that time, which would be the right. candles, mushroom soup. Yeah, that's sure. a good point. That is a good point. Maybe I use too much chicken broth, too. That could also be. I mean, chicken broth, vegetable broth. Sorry, vegetable, vegetable broth. That could be part of it as well. Did you do that? that? You did one cup? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have to go back and watch the footage of this <laughs> right now. So how do you tell if there's anybody watching? Mm -hmm. well, we'll go to my Facebook page or look at the comments and see what people are saying. This is a nice little afternoon snack. <laughs> Janet is climbing. I have some more soda water. Oh, yes. Right? Yeah. That's All right, we've got 40 comments right now. So let's see what people are saying. Oh. Or let's see. Come on, Claire. Please cooperate with me. Okay. Very nice. Oh. Oh, is this that fun one? <laughs> it's not the Ginger Rogers punch that we made. I know that was that was so good. Oh my gosh. That was one of the yeah, best ones ever. Put any of that up. Okay, so. 
I can't. Can someone go to my page? I'm trying to figure it out. I can't find the pictures and great. For some reason, uh, the comments are not loading on my phone, and I do not know why. Can you can you see them right now? Do you think Sid Charisse and Ginger Rogers were friendly? Yeah, they're not. Yeah, they're not. Yeah, they're not. They're not loading here either. Oh, because we're still live. Yeah. It could be. Well, this is what I'm still fine eating this though. Yeah, it's I mean, very tasty. Like every hmm. single ingredient in here is tasty. And um the phyllo dough would be, I mean, if you were gonna make this um completely south of the border style, they would usually use a tortilla or something which would be mm -hmm. heavier. Oh, yeah. It's almost true. like a tostada casserole in a way. I think the big thing was the camp it should have been a Campbell's soup. Hmm. Rather than some hoity toity newfangled. Because it's close. Holistic, natural. I know, I know. I just was happened to be there. So um, I think that was okay. That might be point A where I went wrong. All right, point B where I went wrong. I'm going to go back and watch this footage there. I might have seen the two cups starch chicken and then right before the chicken. There's, it's possible. Oh, because we got the word. The it is possible. Without the comma. It is very yeah. possible that I put two Wait. cups and the broth in instead of what it's possible. I'm gonna go back and check. That is my bad. I'm so sorry. Chicken broth. That may be what we did. That may be where this this all went wrong. But you know, I am not gonna consider this a disaster, honestly, because it's still edible. It's really tasty, and it's, it's not bad. It's awesome. just if you took this to a dinner party with anybody but your good guy, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we gotta go. Oh, oh really? Really? like you really? call this? <laughs> yeah. Right. Mm. Ooh. All right. Well, this this this, this might um. Be worth a remake trying to do this again and getting it right. Yeah. But mm. as Sid would tell you, just keep trying. Just keep, keep trying. Back. Just do, it again. <laughs> do it again. Do it again. Do it one more time. You know, I tend to be a perfectionist and I can be really, really hard on myself. And that, that makes life difficult. So sometimes, especially the last few years, have been hard. And I just keep telling myself, do the best I can. I am not perfect. I'm yeah. gonna screw up. I'm gonna make mistakes. I'm a human being, you know, and but it's fun, and we but, did it together. You know, I actually think this is the first time I've eaten on camera. Oh. <laughs> Should we toast to Charisse? Cheers to Sid Charisse yes. on the centennial of her birth. K.O. K.O. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Well, I think Janet and Rusty and I are going to eat more of our southwestern casserole soup. <laughs> or south of the border casserole soup. Yes. So, thank you all for joining us for Hollywood Kitchen. I'm sorry the questions are not loading in here. That's kind of weird, but we'll I appreciate see you next it. Time. We'll see what's you next time. What's your next one? Uh, I don't know quite yet. I'm okay. still working on that. Mm -hmm. But um, well, we just did see the Gene Kelly Irish. We just did see the Gene Kelly Irish too. So uh, yeah, that might have to happen soon. All right. Okay. Okay. Thank Thanks, you, ladies, everybody. and thank we'll you see you next time. time. Stay tuned for more food, fun, and film history thank from you. Hollywood Kitchen. Bye bye. <laughs> Really? <laughs> 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 <laughs>